If you're looking for the best neighborhoods in Detroit, I mean like the, the creme de la creme, the, the top shelf stuff, well this video is for you. I'll be going down my list of some of the top neighborhoods in all of Detroit and giving you one of my ones that slept on a lot at the end. Welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Ed Butler. I make videos about Detroit and what it's like to live, work, sleep, eat, and play in Detroit. I'm also a full-time realtor, so if you have any thoughts of moving to Detroit, making a move within Detroit, or any of the surrounding areas, I'm your guy. All my information is down below. Feel free to reach out to me. I'm available almost anytime, especially through email. So I'd love to help you and have your back on your home buying, selling, or investing journey. All right, starting off the bat, it's going to be one that I actually left off my last list that I made. You can check that out. I'll post a card for it later in the video, but it's called the Boston Edison Historical District. It's one of my favorite neighborhoods in all of Detroit. And when I have clients that are moving from out of state or from out of, out of the Detroit area, this is one area we definitely look at when we're trying to think about a move for them. It's actually one of the largest historic districts in the entire nation consisting of over 900 homes, and that's gonna range from four different blocks. That's gonna be Boston Boulevard, Chicago Boulevard, Longfellow Boulevard, and then uh, Edison Avenue. And the stretch is gonna be from Woodward all the way down to Linwood on these four streets. Most of these homes were built in the early 1900s, being between 1904 and 1925. Boston Edison has forever been the home of some of the most prominent Detroiters in all of history, from the likes of S.S. Kresge um, to Barry Gordy and to Henry Ford himself. Speaking of which, S.S. or Sebastian S. Kresge's mansion is actually for sale right now in this massive 14 bedroom, six and a half bath, a little bit over 15,000 square foot, sitting on four acres, is listed for about $3 million right now. And that's in the heart of the city. Imagine a complex like that. Check it out, I'll put a link to the, uh, the, the listing below. And if you wanna call Boston Edison home, you're gonna have to fork out a little bit of cash uh, with the average home price gonna be around, around 300 to 330,000. Next on our list is gonna be a historic district that's undergoing some major development. And that's gonna be West Village. West Village is sandwiched between the Island View neighborhood and the Indian Village neighborhood. And it gets his name from being west of Indian Village, hence West Village. And the boundaries are gonna be from Jefferson Avenue all the way down to Kerchival. West Village consists of about 275 single family and duplex homes, as well as 30 plus apartment buildings, with a bunch of mixed use buildings as well, some of which are just finished being developed right now in the heart of West Village, uh, right there off of Kerchival. West Village is a great area if you wanna be really close to downtown, but not necessarily in the downtown area, or if you wanna have quick access to Belle Isle, which you're gonna be right across the street from it once you cross Jefferson. And to call West Village home, the average price is gonna be right around $340,000. Next up on our list is going to be one that's definitely one of my favorites because I'm a very big sports fan and this neighborhood is walking distance to all of our sports arena and that's going to be Brush Park. Brush Park is a historic district that consists of about 22 blocks within the Midtown area and its borders are going to be between Mack and 75 and then Woodward and Bobian. So it was developed in the 1850s for Detroit's elite of the elite. And things have kind of come full circle for this uh, district uh, because early in the uh, 1900s, people start moving to Boston Edison and some of these other up and coming neighborhoods and left Brush Park, right? Then Detroit went to all types of changes and swings where this area changed to something of a place that you probably didn't want to be around. Uh, but it's made its way full back in swing and now it's one of Detroit's most elite areas again. As I mentioned before, you can walk to all our major sports arenas here. So that's gonna be Ford Field, Comerica Park, which are just across 75. And then also going to the west, it's gonna be Little Caesars Arena. That's where the Detroit Red Wings and Detroit Pistons play. 
Brush Park, as I mentioned, has been made for some of the most elite. Uh, one is gonna be Albert Kahn of History, who is a famous architect in Detroit, has made some of the most beautiful buildings here in the city and throughout the nation. His own mansion was here in Detroit and uh, is actually now the site of the Detroit Urban League. And here's a picture of it right here. Coming in at one of Detroit's most expensive neighborhoods, Brush Park is gonna cost you about 552,000 on average to call it home. If you're getting any type of value or anything out of this video, make sure you hit the like button down below. It definitely helps out with the YouTube algorithm and lets YouTube know that Ayo hey, Ed, we want you to keep making these videos. All right, moving further south from West Village and crossing over Jefferson, that's gonna be Rivertown or Riverfront slash Warehouse Districts. So this area houses the majority of the condos in downtown Detroit. A lot of people reach out to me and say, hey, I wanna get a condo in Detroit, blah, blah, blah. Um, and this is kind of the area I always say or recommend that they check out because it has some of the coolest uh, condo complexes all around. And this area is gonna run along Jefferson between I-375 and East Grand Boulevard. So this whole area is kind of what we call Rivertown or the you know Warehouse District, right? And a couple of my favorite communities within this place is gonna be Harbortown, which is kind of smack dab in the middle of it. It's a gated community that houses, you know, high rise condo units, as well as, you know, kind of molded single family condo units. They're really cool and it's right off of the water. And another development that I love is gonna be the Riverfront Lofts. Like taking a look in some of these places, these Riverfront Lofts are, I mean, breathtaking to look at if lofts are your thing. And to call these area home, on average, you're gonna be spending about 280,000. So, I mean, you got some that's definitely lower price than that, but then you definitely got some big boys overlooking the water with huge balconies and all the jazz that's gonna be up there in price. All right, and lastly, an area that not many people talk about that's kind of quietly kept in Detroit, but an amazing place to live if you're looking for something that's more suburban-like within the city. And that's gonna be the Morgan Waterfront Estates. Originally, it began its development back in 2007. Kind of a bad timing. But it was Mr. Morgan's idea to be able to create a suburban-like atmosphere for some of Detroit's top officials and people that wanted to live or work in downtown. But for those who wanted to work downtown but live close to downtown but still have a suburban-like setting. It took about 12 years to complete, but it definitely finally finished. You can find this community off of Jefferson as well. So right about Jefferson and St. Jean, you take it further south towards the water, you'll come to about Freud Street. And then you're gonna find the street called Sandbar Lane. It's a gated community, so you're gonna need to know someone to have access. Um, but Sandbar Lane is where Morgan Estates is housed. The development took 12 years to complete because of course, you know, you had the global meltdown, right? And not a good time to build high-end uh, developments at that time. So it took a little bit of a break in 2012, then came back and finally finished it. Um, but it completed with 43 single family homes and about 40 condos. Each of the homes comes with its own very own boat slip and direct access to the Detroit River. And if you like to call this suburban oasis home, you're gonna be roughly spending about $700,000 to do so. These are some very large homes, some of them called McMansions, um, but it's definitely a place that's beautiful in Detroit that uh, is not talked about enough. These are some of my favorite places in Detroit. There's a lot more to go, and I'll be making future videos talking about some other ones. So if you wanna hear more content like that, make sure you go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you liked anything in this video, make sure you hit the like button. Also, don't forget, I'm a full-time realtor. So if you have any thoughts about moving to Detroit, moving within Detroit, or investing in Detroit, I'm your guy. I love to have your back on your home buying, selling, or investing journey. All my information is down below. Feel free to reach out and I'll catch you on the next one.